kick things off with some news about the U.S. economy. Remember how the Fed raised interest rates a thousand times in the last week to try and stop inflation? <laughs> well, it turns out it didn't work. Breaking news on the economy. Inflation shows no signs of slowing down. The last inflation report before the midterm elections, take a look at some of these numbers, shows that prices rose 8.2% between September 2021 and September 2022. Gasoline prices up more than 18% from last year. Food prices still up 11%. Turkey up 20% from this time last year. Eggs up 27%. Butter 25%. And then look at the little candy corn graphic. Halloween candy up a whopping 34% across the board. That's right, people. Halloween candy. Up 34%. I love how they say it like it's necessary to live. What are we gonna do without it? <laughs> Once again, inflation numbers are out and prices are still going up, affecting everything from gas to Halloween candy. And not only that, razor blades are up 52%. Now what am I supposed to put in the candy? Oh, how do I live? <laughs> I, I will say, a 34% increase in candy, that is a lot. It's so expensive, parents are gonna start encouraging their kids to get into strange vans, you know? <laughs> Just like, look, look, Timmy, the stranger says he's got free candy in, and in this economy, we gotta take a shot, buddy. We gotta do it. <laughs> you got an air tag, I'll find you. Yeah. Look at people, all this, all this inflation is just not sustainable, right? Because here's the thing, inflation is, is, is a lot like masturbation, <laughs> right? Yeah, a little bit is completely natural, but but once you start noticing it in restaurants and car dealerships, <laughs> things have gotten out of hand. <laughs> and look, if we had more time, we could talk about the Federal Reserve and, and, and it looks like how they're gonna keep raising interest rates to try and curb this rampant inflation because that's basically the only tool that they have. The problem is raising interest rates takes so long to filter through the economy that this could be too much raising interest rates and we just don't know it yet. Yeah, in some ways, raising interest rates is a lot like taking mushrooms. Right? You take some, nothing happens. So you take some more, nothing happens. <laughs> then you finish the whole box. And because this stuff clearly doesn't work, what? what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, man. Oh. Oh. Okay, I, I think the, I think the interest rates are kicking in. I just met God and he's a gorilla. Oh. Oh, we don't have the time for this. Because while everyone's bills are going up, one of the worst people of all time just got the biggest bill of all time. Tonight, the stunning verdict, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones ordered to pay nearly a billion dollars for spreading falsehoods about the Sandy Hook shooting. Jones was not in the courtroom for the verdict, but immediately reacted on his online show, calling the attorneys for the victim's families ambulance chasers and mocking the verdict. $120 million. Yeah! By $57 million, $20 million, $50 million, $80 million, $100 million, blah, blah, blah. You get a million, you get $100 million, you get a $50 million. They actually believe they're getting this money. It's like they believe all their own stuff. What a dick. You know, I used to watch American movies as a kid, and I always thought the bad guys that were in the movies were fake. And then I came to this country, and bad guys are literally in their lair like, you haven't seen the last of me! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! But that's right, for defaming the parents and the first responders of Sandy Hook, when he accused them of faking the shooting, Alex Jones has been ordered to pay $965 million. <laughs> yeah which is a huge amount of money. You know you f***ed up when even your great-great-grandkids will have to declare bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah, he's basically got millions of sperm swimming around in these balls, and every single one of them is a broke-ass bitch right now. <laughs> every single one. Every single one. And by the way, by the way, good luck to Alex Jones's lawyer trying to get clients after this, you know? Like, what's your selling point? You know, in my last case, the jury awarded a billion dollars. Wow, to your client? Well, to a client. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if we had more time, we could talk about how Jones's conspiracy theories have only become more mainstream since Sandy Hook, and that there's not enough billion-dollar judgments in the world to change the fact that one-fifth of Americans think that Sandy Hook might have been staged. But we can't get into all of that, because while Alex Jones's trial is over, Andy Warhol's is just beginning. The Supreme Court heard a case today involving one of the most famous artists in American history. The justices are deciding whether Andy Warhol illegally copied another artist's work. 
They're among Andy Warhol's most iconic portraits, the silkscreen images of Prince. The image was based on a 1981 photograph by Lynn Goldsmith. She sued Warhol's foundation, claiming copyright infringement. The justices did find some lighter moments when Clarence Thomas revealed his musical tastes. Let's say that uh, I'm both a Prince fan, which I was in the 80s, and... Um, no longer. <laughs> Well, <laughs> uh, only on Thursday night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Justice Thomas, I see you, you little freak nasty. Oh. Six days a week, it's shapeless black robes, but then Thursday night hits, and you got that full bush of chest hair popping out. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of people right now might be wondering why Thomas only listens to Prince on Thursday nights specifically. But you see, Clarence Thomas is an originalist. And it says right there in the Constitution, Thursday night is f night. Yeah, it says it. <laughs> it says it. We always go back. I don't know why they put that in there, but they did. <laughs> but yeah, the big question in this case is if Andy Warhol simply copied the Prince picture or if he made it his own by transforming it. And it just so happens that I am an art expert. Yeah, so I'm uniquely qualified to answer this question. <laughs> now, if you compare them and you look very closely, you'll see he made it red and purple <laughs> with some squiggly things. I, I'm sorry, I'm such an art geek that this is probably going all over, all over your heads. I, the bottom line is I think it is differenter than the other one. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> now look, now look, if we had the time, we could talk about how it's weird that the Supreme Court is the only place where you get to be an expert on every single issue in the world. It's wild. Well, actually, the Supreme Court and Twitter, but we just don't have the time for that. <laughs> because while the Supreme Court is trying to decide if certain artists are stealing, it's becoming clear that a certain former president definitely is. This morning, a new twist in the investigation into former President Trump's alleged mishandling of classified documents at his Florida estate. Trump told people to move boxes to his residence at the property after advisors received a subpoena in May for any classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. That witness account was corroborated by security camera footage, which showed people moving the boxes. Yo, I'm sorry, Trump is a legend. Who else gets caught committing crimes with their own security cameras? <laughs> Who are you? How are you real? <laughs> you realize, you realize this guy's there like, hurry, move those classified documents so I can illegally hide them from the FBI. But first, but first, let's all wave at that blinking red light and tell it our names. Donald J. Trump, the J stands for genius. <laughs> There's something inspiring about it, too, when you think about it. You know, this is actually inspiring, because Trump is so bad at crime, but he gets away with so much of it. It just shows us that we could do crime, too. <laughs> yeah, he's like the drunk couple at karaoke. Hearing them screech through Don't Stop Believing gives you the confidence to try Kiss from a Rose. <laughs> and look, if we had a little more time, we could have so much fun talking about how Trump has once again helped the Justice Department crack the case against him. Or we could even get into my personal conspiracy theory that Ron DeSantis and his people are probably the ones who snitched on Trump to get him out of the presidential race. But we don't have the time for that. Because while the FBI is investigating Trump's mishandling of classified documents, Congress is investigating a whole different Trump crime. And today, at their final hearing, the January 6th committee released never-before-seen footage showing what Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer were doing while Trump's mob was outside asking to have an intimate conversation with Mike Pence's neck. And it was pretty impressive how they were keeping their cool and trying to get stuff done. Everything from phoning the vice president to even trying to call in the National Guard. But one of the craziest moments was when Nancy Pelosi pointed out one really smelly reason the lawmakers might not be able to stay in the Capitol. What we are being told very directly is it's going to take days for the Capitol to be okay again. We've gotten a very bad report about the condition of, of the um, House floor with defecation and all that kind of thing as well. I just got off with the Vice President. He had the impression from Mitch that Mitch wants to get everybody back to do it there. Yes. I said, well, we're getting a counterpoint that is, it could take time uh, to clean up the poo-poo that they're making all over the, literally and figuratively in the Capitol. Yep, you heard that right. It turns out right-wing Jamara Choir was shitting 
<laughs> or as Nancy Pelosi put it, poo-pooing all over the Capitol. <laughs> and you know, when, when, when I was watching this happen, I thought to myself, it's so interesting how people like Tucker Carlson were calling black people animals when the George Floyd protests were happening. <laughs> but when these people were literally shitting in the Capitol, Fox was like, these brave patriots are just expressing their frustration <laughs> and standing up for American democracy. Huh? They, they're, they're not the animals? Like, I can tell you for a fact, even in Minnesota, when shit was going down and people were raiding that target, there was no black man who stopped in the middle of all of them and was like, hey, yo, hold up, hold up, hey, yo, hold up, <laughs> hey, hold up, hold up. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> but we don't have the time to talk about those moments from the committee because the biggest news of the day is that the January 6th committee has issued a subpoena to speak to the chief of Poo Poo himself. What's happening now, the January 6th Select Committee punctuates its final hearing before the midterm elections with a bombshell, a subpoena for former President Donald Trump. So this afternoon, I am offering this resolution that the committee direct the chairman to issue a subpoena for relevant documents and testimony under oath from Donald John Trump. Oh, shit! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> That's what the J stands for? What a bombshell! <laughs> oh, and also the fact that they just subpoenaed a former president of the United States. And I mean, hell yeah, finally. How are they only deciding on this now? Huh? Only now? It's like doing a whole murder investigation, and then on the last day being like, should we, like, talk to the murderer? Yeah? <laughs> he might have some information about the murderer, maybe. <laughs> now, even after this came out, everyone assumes that Trump is not gonna show up to testify. But I feel like he's gonna be a little conflicted. Yeah, because on the one hand, yes, he thinks this is a crooked witch hunt that is out to get him. But on the other hand, the ratings. <laughs> Can you imagine the ratings? This would be like the Super Bowl meets Watergate, meets Game of Thrones, meets a mandatory HR video about sexual harassment. Everyone <laughs> will be watching. Everyone will be watching. And we all know the only thing Donald Trump loves more than ratings is grabbing classified documents by the pussy. And look, whether you like Trump or not, you've got to admit, this dude is a record breaker. First president to, e to be impeached twice, huh? First president to be subpoenaed for staging a coup. First president to go to prison, maybe? First president to break out of prison? First president to escape to Mexico? First president to be blocked by his own wall trying to escape to Mexico? 